So good morning and, and, and everybody and welcome to St Michael and All Angels on, online. It's the sixth Sunday of Trinity, 19th of July. Um, I'm not going to go through all this, um, but just a couple of things to say possibly that uh, <clears throat> everyone should be aware that the church, St Michael's, is now open for private prayer. Um, from 10 till 12 on Monday and 2 till 4 on Thursday. So uh, do come in if you can. <clears throat> Janice, do we have any other notices? Don't think there's anything else to say. PCC meeting on Wednesday. Yeah, I don't think so. I think you've covered it. Thanks. Marvellous. Oh, and I haven't updated that. Roger's taking us this morning. Um, so, Roger, over to you. Thank you very much. To unmute myself seeing Tony Hill down. I thought, oh, good, I can yes. relax from it. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Lovely to be with you. Just uh, as we bring ourselves to worship, we will just have a moment of quiet before we begin. So, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. And our opening hymn, it's uh, Jacob's great discovery, discovered God's faithfulness. God's promise is not dependent upon him and his scheming, but on the faithfulness of the Lord. So we sing our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I'm just going to stop sharing for a minute because I need to share the sound. Marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
The opening sentences uh, record to us Jacob's experience that although he'd run away, he found the Lord was near him. So to you, O Lord, I shall always stay near. You hold me by your right hand. You lead me by your counsel and will draw me to experience your glory. Whom else do I have in heaven? With you, I desire nothing on earth. My heart and my flesh may dissolve, but God is forever my portion, my rock. It's good to draw close to God. I've made the Lord my refuge, and now I will tell of all your works. We're gathered and we're together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day he asks us to be aware of him. This is the day he wants us to learn something new. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. And as we rejoice in today and in the mercy and the love of God, we first, we bring ourselves to our holy, perfect, loving God, reminding ourselves of our faults and asking for his forgiveness and his restoration. So time of quiet before we join together in the uh, confession prayer. So let's pray together. God, our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and you give us life. You give your people new life through faith in Christ. You do not turn your face from us nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you, against our family, friends and neighbors, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We've damaged your people, we've damaged ourselves, we've wounded your love and marred your image in us. As we bring our regrets and sorrows, please forgive, renew and restore us for the sake of your Son and give us the experience of heaven here on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy, perfect God of light and love, you reached out to us by sending your Son into the world to rescue and renew us. Give us your pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. And the colic special prayer for today reminds us that God loves us and we can experience his presence and power. So we pray together. Loving God, you've prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you and all things and above all things may experience your presence and power which exceeds all that we can desire through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen and we have now our first reading, continuing the story of Jacob. The first reading is taken from Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and started towards Haran. At sunset, he came to a holy place and camped there. He lay down to sleep, resting his head on a stone. He dreamed that he saw a stairway reaching from earth to heaven with angels going up and coming down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and Isaac, he said. I will give to you and to your descendants this land 
on which you are lying. <clears throat> they will be as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. They will extend their territory in all directions. And through you and your descendants, I will bless all the nations. Remember, I will be with you and protect you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. <clears throat> I will not leave you until I have done all that I have promised you. Jacob woke up and said, The Lord is here. He is in this place. And I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, What a terrifying place this is. It must be the house of God. It must be the gate that opens onto heaven. Jacob got up early next morning, took the stone that was under his head, and set it up as a memorial. Then he poured olive oil on it to dedicate it to God. He named the place Bethel. The town there was once known as Luz. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is verses from Psalm 139. Lord, you have examined me. And you know me, you know everything I do. From far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I'm working or resting. You know all my actions, even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You're all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It's beyond my understanding. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you'd be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the furthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me or the light around me to turn into night. But even darkness is not dark for you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there's any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. Now the gospel reading from uh, St. Matthew, the story of the, uh, the wheat and the weeds. The second reading is taken from the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the heads of grain began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? They asked him. No, he answered, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first, tie them in bundles and burn them. And then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. When Jesus had left the crowd and gone indoors, his disciples came to him and said, 
tell us what the parable about the weeds in the field means. Jesus answered, the man who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The feed is the world. The good seed is the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. And the enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvest workers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so the same thing will happen at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels to gather up out of his kingdom all those who cause people to sin and all others who do evil things. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and gnash their teeth. Then God's people will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Listen then, if you have ears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. Well, not one of the, um, the more pleasant gospel readings uh, about judgment at the end, the mixture of weeds and wheat. And I suppose we can see that in Jacob's life individually. He was, uh, like most of us, a real mixture of uh, good intentions, bad intentions, good deeds and bad deeds. <clears throat> well, there's the picture. Um, Jacob with his uh, head resting on the stones, uh, whether actually the, he did choose a stone for his pillow, I don't know, maybe it wasn't. Rest my head, as we know. It's, uh, it's a way people use a metaphor for bed when Jesus said, you know, remember foxes have holes and birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He meant he had no fixed abode. And Jacob's rock, obviously a sizable chunk of rock, because after his night's sleep, he sets it up on end and pours oil on it to dedicate it as a marker on his journey away from home, away from his family, away from the anger of Esau, his brother, who he cheated out of his birthright. Birthright probably doesn't mean much to us these days, <clears throat> but in those days, and still in, in many societies today, to be the number one son, the heir, the one who's going to carry on the family line, the head of the, head of the, uh, the family, is very, very important. And uh, we remember that Jacob took advantage of Esau's character and his physical needs and the situation they were both in and turned it to his own advantage. Um, just as a reminder of last week's story, if you like the story so far, Esau's been out hunting, uh, Jacob is back home and he's uh, making a very tasty, good smelling stew and, and Esau comes in uh, sweaty, tired, hungry, and he says, I'm starving, he says, give me some of that stew. And Jacob says, okay, well, well, we'll swap your birthright for it. What good's my birthright to me, says Esau, I'm about to die of starvation, give me some stew. And Jacob gets Esau to renounce his status for a bowl of stew. And, and then later on, Jacob with his mother's connivance, he takes advantage again of his father's character, his father's liking for Esau's sort of food and, and uh, his father's physical condition, his father's blind, can't see, to gain for himself the formal blessing passed on from father to son, to the first son, that should have been Esau's blessing. And thus Jacob takes over Esau's place as the family head. And uh, lots of people these days try to turn a situation to my advantage, um, exploiting other people's weaknesses, whether it's because of where they live, their economic situation, their physical situation or what. We see this again and again, people taking advantage of other people. Never a good thing, never a good thing. And it wasn't a good thing for Jacob because Esau share, uh, swears revenge. So Jacob has to run, runs for his life and physically, emotionally exhausted, uh, he reaches a city, um, called a city, probably a small town or village to us, called Luz. But he doesn't go in there to seek lodging. He's probably afraid that Esau is uh, on his tail. 
So he finds a local holy place. And uh, that would have been a secluded spot, perhaps a little grove of trees or some rocks or a stream dedicated to a local God. And he lies down, exhausted, goes to sleep even with his uh, head on, on the rocks. And there he makes an amazing discovery. His God, the Lord, is there. And he, he's still connected with God's promise. He's still connected with the family story, the story of the Lord appearing to Abraham. The promise made would have been part of the family story passed down. And this is perhaps, perhaps it's been Jacob's rather clumsy attempt to do the Lord's work uh, for him by making sure he was the one following Isaac. And in spite of all that Jacob's done to mess things up, the Lord is still there. The promise is still valid. And Jacob makes this amazing story that the Lord, his God, the God of Abraham and Isaac, his father's grandfather, is not tied down to a place. That was the current belief then. Each geographical location had its own God. Um, special places, uh, significant trees and rivers, uh, mountains, hills, they all had gods associated with them. Still, uh, still true in many parts of the world today. And it's important that you worship the local God, otherwise uh, the local God will get angry. You need to worship the God of the place. And Jacob makes this amazing discovery. The Lord is not tied down to a place. The Lord is going to go with Jacob and bless him and be with him. And perhaps an even more amazing and significant discovery that the Lord's promises are secure and reliable. I don't think Jacob's understanding at this point went as far as the words, the great words, we read in Psalm 139, words which we uh, often say to ourselves when we feel the need to remind ourselves that the Lord is close to us. Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you'd be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you'd be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the furthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. Words that are great comfort and uh, also a great challenge. Wherever we are, however we are, the Lord is with us, even if we don't know it. So Jacob wakes up, slightly fearful, not surprising when God works in a powerful way. It's a quite a terrifying and awesome experience. He sets up his marker stone, he dedicates it with oil, and renames the place in his own mind, but the, the name stuck, Bethel. Bethel, just the literal translation, the house of God. And so he travels on, hopefully now knowing that the Lord is with him always and everywhere. And of course, he has more special times of contact ahead. And I'm sure that when times got a bit tough, he looked back in his mind, the experience uh, that, that he had had, that very real and powerful experience that he'd marked with his stone. So let's spend a few moments quietly, just reflecting back on our own lives. And uh, lots of experiences most of us have had as we've gone through life, but let's just try and pick out one experience that we would mark as very significant, a wow moment on our Christian life journey. And uh, on those times, many people perhaps leave something significant in a place or they uh, have something to remind them. Um, often experience like that happens in a, in a place of worship, a uh, cathedral. And we might pop into the gift shop and buy something to remind ourselves. It doesn't have to be something physical. It might just be in our mind. But let's spend a few moments looking back and saying to the Lord, well, just just remind me, please, of a time when you seem so close. A time I can remind myself that I can mark on my Christian journey.
And secondly, Jacob marked his special place uh, with a stone. And of course, we're looking forward to getting back into our special holy places of worship. Um, Haversage and Bamford, both built with stones. That lies ahead. Significant and important time. And it's important for us to remember always that we are the church, the gathered people of God. And uh, I'd like to finish just by reminding ourselves of the words of St. Peter. He said these words, as you come to Jesus, who is the living stone, the one who was rejected by humans, but he was chosen by God and is precious to him. You also, that's us, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Living stones, people who are God's presence in the world. That's what we're called to be. This version of the creed actually comes from the um, Iona community. And it, it's one that we often use in, in Bamford Church. And so we say together, we believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and his kingdom will come on earth We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of the Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. And now Patricia is going to lead us in our intercessory prayer. So let us pray. Lord, as we join together online, may we continue to pray for, to God for strength and protection using the words which our new Archbishop of York used. May the love of our good and generous God guide and protect us. May the hope of the gospel sustain us and bring us joy. When we are lost and lonely, when the road ahead seems hard, or when the darkness gathers, may the light and peace of Christ be ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are working to sow the seed of trust in you. May that seed grow and flourish in your churches as we learn to put our trust in you. We pray for those with the responsibility for finding us a new priest for our churches of St. Michael's, Haversage and Grindleford and Bamford. We want a new priest to guide us through these difficult times and increase our faith in you. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless love and gifts of grace through jesus christ our lord lord in your mercy hear, hear our prayer. prayer we pray for those who are ill especially those known to us and for their relations and friends for mike wusselholm and eileen and mary knight and andrew 
comfort and heal all those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus. Bring comfort to those grieving for loved ones who have died and bring peace to those worried, fearful and uncertain that the virus may spread. Help us all to behave responsibly to prevent its spread. We also pray for those working in hospitals and care homes who may be risking or have risked their lives to care for the sick. We give thanks for our local care home in Hathersage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died recently and give thanks for their lives, especially remembering Jenny Bruce, and pray that they may find peace, and we pray for their relations and friends who live, whose, whose lives were enriched by them. Lord, comfort and help all those who suffer in mind, body or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Accept these prayers, Lord, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let us not be, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So our final hymn, which is Blessed Assurance, reminds us of the assurance we have that in spite of Jacob's messing up by plotting and scheming, in spite of our messing up, the promise to Abraham is still valid. Uh, we live in the realisation of that promise and we can be assured that God is faithful. Jesus has completed his work and he is ours. So join together, sing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine.
Lord God of heaven and earth, you meet with us in unexpected ways. Surprise us today with a fresh vision of your greatness and faithfulness so that we can speak out the good news with new enthusiasm. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen.